Hello everyone, welcome to the Asafa Macaro Wars channel. Today's video is about how the AC orifice tube works. This is a very important part of the air conditioning system. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the camera close so you can see this better. So let's get started. Okay, so now that we have the camera closed, let's go over its design and operation. First of all, let's talk about its location. The orifice tube most common location is going to be either the liquid line or the inlet line of the evaporator core. Those are the two most common places. It's easier to distinguish where it's at because if you start touching the lines, you're going to find a section where the line is going to be hotter on one side and colder on the other. And you're going to see crimps because when the line's crimped, it keeps the orifice tube from moving. So this side right here, the longer side, which has a screen, I didn't want to draw the screen so it wouldn't interfere with the rest, is facing the high side which is the inlet. This side over here is going to be facing the low side, which is the evaporator core side, and this is the outlet. The flow of the refrigerant is going to go this way. Your compressor is creating the pressure, and the refrigerant goes through the condenser, and from the condenser it arrives at the orifice tube. And what happens at the orifice tube, the high pressure liquid is going to become a low pressure liquid, and there's a reason for that. Since the flow is going to be restricted, the refrigerant is going to expand because now it has more space. Because here it's very compressed, and as the flow is restricted, then you have, like I said, more room right here, and it starts expanding, and as it does, it cools down. The ideal temperature of 134A refrigerant on the low side as it enters the evaporator core is around 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That way when your blower is blowing, your temperature in your vents should be around 40, 38 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. This orange right here are going to help to seal the pressure because this refrigerant should flow inside through the orifice that's already been predetermined. There are two types of orifice tubes. This one right here is called a fixed orifice tube. The orifice size has already been predetermined and it does not change. There are no moving parts. Everything is fixed. And one of the things that could change the flow is if it gets contaminated, if debris or metal starts accumulating on the outside of the screen, then that's going to restrict the flow and it's going to create a different pattern which is going to lead to malfunctions. The other type of orifice tube, which is really not an orifice tube, is called a variable orifice valve. A variable orifice valve is going to look on the outside just like an orifice tube. However, it's going to have the orifice tube, but in addition, it's going to have a sensing spring in a variable orifice tube that is going to run parallel to the fixed orifice tube. And as the temperature changes, is going to open and close allowing more or less refrigerant to flow through that way the temperature and the pressure of the low side is going to be more consistent at different RPMs because with the fixed orifice tube even though the size is the same and nothing moves there are variations because you drive at different speeds when you are idle the compressor is going to spin and create a certain pressure but when you're driving at higher RPMs, then your compressor is going to be spinning faster, creating higher pressures, and it's going to create variations in between these two sides. So a variable orifice valve would prevent that from happening. Now we're going to go over the color of the orifice tube and how that determines its size. So let's take a look. Okay, so we have some of the most common orifice tube sizes by color and this could vary by manufacturers just so you know but the colors tend to be pretty universal for the most part so a green orifice tube is going to have an opening of 52 thousandths of an inch an orange orifice tube is going to have 57 thousandths of an inch opening a red orifice tube is going to be 62 thousandths of an inch a black and blue is going to be 67 thousandths of an inch and a white is going to have a 72 thousandths of an inch opening so that's going to determine the flow of the refrigerant as it passes through. Each vehicle manufacturer already determined which orifice tube diameter is the most suitable for each vehicle and that's going to depend on the size 
of the AC system, the capacity, the size of the vehicle. So they already did all the homework and figured out which one of these is going to be the one that is going to give you the best AC performance on your vehicle. So by changing sizes, you're going to alter that and it's possible that instead of improving your AC system, you will make it worse, just so you know. So your best bet is to always stay with what the manufacturer already determined. But if you really want to improve the system and you remove the regular orifice tube, just install a variable orifice valve. We already explained why that's so much better. So you stay within the specs, but you enable it to work better at different RPMs. To continue with this refrigerant flow dilemma, there's something else to take into account with the fixed orifice tube. Having a fixed orifice tube in your system is really a compromise between stop and go traffic. And as previously mentioned, a variable orifice valve, because it has a bimetal control spring, it blocks off one of the two ports, reducing the flow of the refrigerant, allowing more heat to be removed with the condenser, and as speeds increase, the valve opens back up, allowing maximum flow through the system again. This improves the performance over the fixed orifice tube at low speeds and idle while still providing high level of performance at highway speeds. And last but not least, there are a couple methods that vehicle manufacturers use to try to compensate on the dilemma of different flows at different speeds when using a fixed orifice tube. One of the methods is to turn the compressor on and off at certain times, or what is called cycling it. Another method is to install a valve inside the AC compressor that can actually cause adjustments in the pumping capacity of the compressor. And what this is going to do is going to regulate the amount of refrigerant leaving the compressor. So by using any of those two methods, our manufacturers are going to compensate and try to have a more constant flow on your AC system while maintaining a fixed orifice tube design. So there will be times that you may see your AC compressor cycle on and off and there may not be anything wrong with your AC system whatsoever. It's just cycling on and off to maintain a constant flow. That obviously cannot be confused with malfunctioning of the AC system. You can determine that by using pressure gauges. But it's important to take note that depending on what you drive, that could be a method that is being used to have a constant flow at different RPMs. And there you go, now you know how the AC orifice tube works. On my next video I'm going to explain how the expansion valve works, which is purpose is similar to the orifice tube, but it's a more efficient design. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to include a link on this video to another tutorial I made that explains how the entire AC system works. So if you want to learn how the whole system works, just click on that link. Otherwise, we'll see you on my next video if you want to learn how the expansion valve works. Take care.